Hello everyone, welcome to another video with me, Umber Rays, and today I am making a brand new video in a new video series that I am calling Dear Global. Now the reason that I'm making these videos is because, well, when we have this event and some of the events that are coming up in the future, I want to give a little bit of perspective of what I think of the global updates, what I want to uh, talk about in general advice terms, as well as just kind of talk about the new banners that are coming to global because, you know what, some, you know, having experienced some of this stuff and seeing a little bit of the future means that I can give some advice. Now, obviously, uh, excuse me, uh, not the perfect invite necessarily, because, you know, I, I think a lot of times uh, it is a little bit confused by people thinking, oh, well, Global and the JP are completely different games. And maybe I've even said this sometimes, and my opinion has changed recently. But honestly, JP is the beginning, uh, and then, you know, Global's a little more refined. I would definitely not say that JP is the beta test. I think that's kind of insulting and rude uh, to a lot of the JP players because that's not necessarily true at all. If that's the case, then when this stuff came out on Global, there wouldn't be any problems, but very clearly there still are, although maybe not as some of the serious problems as JP has announced. Anyway, that's beside the point. This series is only to give you guys an idea and a little bit of advice. And your I would always take this advice with a grain of salt, knowing that things can change, things can be added or removed from the game. And that makes it very difficult to 100% be able to accurately give the future. However, Given this event, I feel like I can give you some absolutely great advice. So let's cue some music and get right into it, shall we? So, Dragon Quest. I have never been the biggest Dragon Quest fan in the entire world, and when both of the banners came by, came and went, I definitely scoffed at both, thinking, oh, this is cool, this is cool for people who love Dragon Quest, but I really underestimated a lot of the units. To this day, I think that I am still kind of pained for how much I have underestimated some of the units in the past. And this is something that I think um, I need to talk about. For one thing, on both banners, as a matter of fact, um, a unit that I want to put uh, just start off uh, giving a lot of it, um, recommendation to is just Golem. Uh, Golem is, you know, a three-star base character. He is not particularly someone who you think I would necessarily start off recommending. After all, he just doesn't ever have seen... He doesn't seem that good. So why am I recommending him uh, a considerable amount? Well, basically it's his TMR. His TMR is actually just really, really, really nice. Um, I absolutely love this TMR currently on JP because uh, just Mighty Defense basically is a boost of defense, of uh, the defense stat by 40%, which is a really, really, really big boost. It's not just for tanks, if that's what you're thinking. Support units in the future, everything. Uh, a 40% defense is still a really nice stat boost, uh, not getting into maybe some of the more recent five stars, uh, like Ulbrich. So that 40% defense, uh, just, I, I cannot recommend enough um, trying to farm some of those, especially with the raid. If you can get even a couple of these, I can tell you right now that it has made a big difference for me. And the other unit that I really want to recommend off the original banner, well, okay, Golem is on both of them, but this is important, is Liquid Metal Slime. Now, the big reason that I recommend Liquid Metal Slime, I mean, he has a general nice, you know, shield, uh, the Metal Slime shield, which is a 49 defense, uh, nullifies poison, sleep, paralysis, confusion, disease, and stone. Now, in both of the JP events, I actually completely missed out on him, and I'm still pretty sad. Now, here's the thing. Here's the reason why I am recommending this. Currently, Global 
I have no idea whether you will get the parameter missions. Basically, if you don't know what parameter missions are, they are missions to create certain units with certain uh, stats. So, for instance, defense-wise, you will need to get a unit with 1,650 defense. And other than maybe a 7-star Wilhelm with some still some pretty amazing equipment or a really amazingly equipped Siegfried, it is a hard one to get unless you have Liquid Metal Slime. Liquid Metal Slime actually reach it, reaches the um, uh, that, that parameter mission so incredibly easy. And the reward is basically super TMR level, you know, an accessory that gives, you know, 50% uh, defense increase is nothing to scoff at. So, and considering that he's also just a four star base, I would very, very much recommend getting your hands on this guy. Um, this is like, could be one of your last chances to get him. It could be that you don't see a parameter mission, the parameter missions in the future on the global side, but still, I, I like just for that one reason alone. Alone, uh, liquid metal slime is at least th worth throwing a couple tickets and hoping maybe you get a little bit lucky off of it. Now, next up, I want to just talk a little bit about killing machine. Killing machine. This is one that I'm not super crazy about. Um, he's a four-star base. Uh, his sword is 114 attack, enables machine killer, and boosts uh, physical damage against you know machine monsters. But honestly, uh, it's not a very strong attack sword. It's not going to be true dual hands, so it's really um, it might be if you get it fine. But otherwise, I just wouldn't try super super hard for it. And as for Orochi, Orochi is another one that would probably be still pretty good to get your hands on. Instinctual Guard uh, boosts attack 40%, defense, and spirit when HP below, falls below a certain point. A lot of upcoming high damage trials that won't necessarily kill your party. So 40% to all of those things is still pretty good, and I have to recommend it. And the other unit to talk about is, of course, Dragon Lord. And Dragon Lord 7 star will be stronger with the global upgrades. Um, without seeing, you know, the exact data yet, not quite sure about how much stronger he will be. But, um, you know, global seems to have pushed him to be a little bit stronger than the JP version. Keep in mind that he is not part of the JP conversation at all anymore. And basically, while he is incredibly strong, Trance Terra's chaining option still should pretty well destroy this guy. So, trying super hard for him, eh, I mean, if you get one of him in the future, if the Trust Mastery reward coin system comes to global, then you can just buy his prism that way. So, maybe even one is enough or if you're looking very long term, but by then he could already be very much outclassed depending on what else gets global upgrades. So, you know, consider that when you move forward. But of course, this is not just about the old banner. This is actually about the new banner, and the new banner does have a few new things. The Uber Killing Machine, E-Stark, and Slime Knight. Now, honestly... <laughs> Ooh, this one is pretty easy recommendations, and I'm just going to talk about the new units. I've already talked about Golem, and Robin Hood is just meh to me. First of all, Slime Knight. I absolutely think you should get your hands on a Slime Knight, because his Trust Mastery reward is the Slime Shield. A Defense 48, Spirit 48, which is already a you know incredibly strong uh, light shield great uh, for a ton of units in the future that can only equip light shields and not heavy shields um, but the big thing is that or wait I think it's a I don't actually remember if it's a heavy shield it, either way it doesn't really matter because the important thing is it boosts water resistance by 50% this is so important for the future. If you look at some of the trials that do water damage, especially in Leviathan 3-star, this water resistance on a shield is absolutely invaluable, especially if you have Awakened Rain. I cannot tell you how happy I was later when Leviathan 3-star, or 
fight came out that I had this water resistant shield made my life incredibly easier. Cannot recommend getting at least like just one slime knight, maybe two if you're lucky, but one is pretty damn awesome. Now, the Uber Killing Machine uh, is the other four star base. Uh, TMR, like his kit, basically you're getting into the seven star meta now, so he's not super, super great. Um, he's actually kind of okay in Arena because he has some moves that can be a real pain in the butt to deal with in Arena, but um, other than that, he's not super valuable. And his TMR also doesn't feel that super valuable. 103 attack, 20% HP hammer that enables Maneater. There really aren't strong hammer support in the future, and I would not expect there to be hammer support, so this one just feels like... Mm. If you get him, fine. If not, no big deal. And last but not least is E-Start, a character that, um, hey, maybe you are a big fan of Dragon Quest and you totally want this guy in Dragon Lord, fine by me, but here's the thing, I'm going to say that E-Start is probably not going to be good enough to stay in the meta for really, really long. Again, um, E-Start has the, um, is basically one of the last big true du or dual wield units you know one of the units that has you know dual wield in his kit naturally and it's in his seven star kit but still it is a big thing for him Hayu is coming in the future true dual hand will become a major thing in the future so this guy will be strong don't get me wrong but in the ultimate there's a couple of things that hold this guy back one he is kind of based on swords, and swords don't really have the greatest of future. They don't have a terrible future. But even with his TMR being upgraded to a 60% that is not stackable as well, honestly, just trying to keep this guy with a ton of support into the future, looking at and knowing what the true dual hand meta does, and I know it's called something else on global, but just roll with it, you guys. Six, uh, an extra 10% isn't going to fix what is not. This is basically not the problem. E Stark does have Holy Explosion Taining, which will be great for him, along with the True Dual Hand. He'll be strong for, you know, a little bit, and then Hayu will come out, and that's the one you really should be saving for. So unless you're a fan, I feel like this is a big pass. Also, his Super Trust Mastery... 176 attack sword. Again, I've already talked about swords. This really doesn't have a future um, considering what great swords and ka eventually katanas will become. We have only really on the JP side gotten our first true dual hand sword and it's nothing to be that impressed about. So this feels pretty passable. The other thing is shocking slash dark damage and reduced dark resistance. I guess maybe if it's a really high percentage, I don't expect it to be but even then there feel like there are a lot of trials that darkness is just a liability rather than anything so i think there are better ways you can spend your resources than on this one but honestly all of this advice pales in comparison to what i really want to recommend and what i want global people to understand is the fact that all of these units are really not the thing that I wanted to talk about in making this video. What I want to talk about is our unit at the bottom here, Marquise de Lyon, which Marquise de Lyon is a fantastic unit, probably the, if not easily, you know, Liquid Metal Slime is the other one that I would probably argue is one of the most valuable, and Golem and Orochi come in you know, that next position, but Marquise de Leon is probably the one that I think makes this raid the most special raid in all of Brave Exvius history, and that is pretty high praise. So why am I giving it such praise? Prize? Well, he is a prize, but why am I giving this guy so much praise? Mainly because Marquise de Leon has something really important about him. He's a raid unit, and before you all get too excited about everything I'm going to tell you, I want to explain one very clear thing. Getting this guy out of the raid pool is not easy. The rates on him, on drawing him are pretty bad. Probably about the same as a 4-star ticket or a 10%, if not worse. And here's why. 
Marquise de Leon is a five-star base that goes to a seven-star. On the JP side, with all the raids that have happened in all of our history since this one raid, they have never repeated this. We have never seen a raid unit that is a five-star base ever again. And there is one very simple reason. Three copies of this guy nets you a 50% trust move by basically making him into a 7-star and then fusing one other 5-star copy of him into that 7-star, you get a 50% trust move. Marquise de Leon has a, you know, is a pretty okay unit in general. And what I mean by a pretty okay unit in general is that um, he's pretty good in Arena as a 7-star um unit just to do some extra damage and everything if you're lacking on seven stars and hell people still kind of use him to this day on the jp side in arena so that should tell you something but honestly his super dress mastery boosts physical damage and magical damage against beasts and avian there really haven't been a super high number of beast and avian trials in the future and that 50% Trust Moogle is pretty damn valuable. Even his Trust Mastery reward, eh, 120 attack, claw with 15% HP. Tifa's Super TMR, if you're really looking, and Priest's Super TMR is way better if you're really wanting to make a Fist user. So honestly, the TMR is not the thing here, and neither is his Super Trust Mastery. I think I had one of them. The 50% trust moogles that you can potentially get out of this raid are pretty damn awesome for stacking into the future when you start getting more five stars you want. Let me tell you, it's a really nice thing when you get your two Hayus and you just have 100% trust mastery right there to get Hayus super or Hayus regular TMR and then get the most out of your brand new seven star feels really good. And Marquise de Leon is an opportunity that has never come around on the JP side again, mainly because this is pretty exploitable and kind of devalues a ton of other ways that we get uh, trust mastery moogles. So this is basically a once in a lifetime opportunity. So I'm highly recommending that you global players do not sleep on this raid for one particular reason. Marquise de Leon he is absolutely incredible. Grinding out as many raid coins as you can, mm, it will either net you a lot of trust moogles, for, or like regular trust moogles for some of the Dragon Quest units, which have some great TMRs well into the future. Or the other thing is that you just get a lot of Marquise de Leon and every three is a 50% trust moogle. I am going to give a big asterisk one more time just to make sure that nobody comes back at me swinging, being angry about me being like, oh, you said it was so amazing, you never got even one of them. In that voice too, no less. Marquise de Leon is an incredibly rare pull. However, that being said, uh, with me and my 6 million points back on the J when the JP raid happened, I was able to get an extra four of him, which was, and I went for the Super Trust Mastery instead of realizing how much potentially awesome it could be to just get a ton of Moogle. So spend responsibly, plan out your resources. I think that this, uh, the Dragon Quest banner has never returned on the JP side since, and that should probably be a little bit of a hint about, you know, what it's going to be like for global in the future. I would not sleep on this one. So, Dear Global, Marquise de Leon, Liquid Metal Slime, Golem, as well as Orochi, fantastic, and possibly your last time, or, yeah, last chance, I should say, to get all of the wonderfulness that comes in this. So, hopefully you found this video useful. Uh, I want to thank you very much for watching and supporting the channel and everything like that, and I will see you all in the next video. See you next time.